Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramp. I'm here to usher you into the weekend. It is the first weekend in October, which means I'm going to be talking a little bit about the Art Walk that happens in Missoula every first Friday in the downtown and surrounding areas at many of the artist shops and uh, galleries in Missoula. So I'll have that art guide for you later in today's show. Just before events, I got some pre-critic with a bunch of movies that are coming out this weekend. There's also a bunch of streaming shows that I just got notified on my phone like crazy from Netflix. So there's just definitely a lot of things happening in terms of media. I got a, a brand new dub and stuff from the Brain That Wouldn't Die, one of the first movies that kind of inspired me to do dub and stuff in the first place. But you know, Mystery Science Theater did it, so I'm like, okay, so they're just commentary over a movie, so I'm, I did it anyway. So let's jump right in. Wild boars in Montana, the famous invasive and dangerous species has been spotted in Montana, prompted Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks to get on high alert. Uh, the carcass, mind you, of the dead pig was found in West uh, uh, Lake uh, Kukaneska prompted the Montana Department, I'm sorry if I mispronounced it, the Montana Department of Livestock to hold a meeting in both Libby and Eureka last week as re the report uh, reignited concerns that feral swine may eventually enter Montana from Canada. Although many of the wild species of pig are very dominant in the southern states and predominantly in Texas, Montana and over and all over the um, Midwestern states have been lucky. Um, of course, what's the big deal? What's, what's wild boar here and there? Wild boar are known to carry a variety of diseases, more than 40 to 50 different types of diseases and pesticides that have been known to transmit to humans and livestock. When they are not uh, carriers, um, they are uh, territorial and have been known to be uh, aggressors and cause widespread damage to farms and property because their tusks they used to dig up roots and consumed in large quantities. The Department of Livestock stated in a press release that the pig status has not been confirmed feral, although it has features often associated with feral pigs, including tusks and long hair. The swine was found in very deteriorated form inside the Kootenai uh, National Forest. European boars were introduced in Canada in the 1980s, and fear of European boars spreading in the U.S. have many concerns. Domesticated cats are also considered invasive and in pack ecosystems as well, but boars are just straight up jerks. Um, Texas uh, has a standing order to shoot on site and it's not enough to handle these invasive species because a lot of experts are saying that it really just takes one pig, one female to kind of cause a whole clan of wild pigs and they also investigated reports of feral swine and members of the public are welcome to aid in agency and detection efforts by reporting these feral pig sightings. So the part of this is the reason why they don't want people to actually hunt or shoot these wild boars because they would become in a way habituated and basically spread out and hide better and so they are fast learners and they know how to uh, uh, spread and hide depending upon this so if you see one report one that's what they're asking for so far so um, in other news Ukraine is kind of on a major upswing in momentum and has, and has moved in their favor in the latest breakthrough Ukraine forces have penetrated Moscow's defenses um, not in Moscow but in their defenses in the, in the strategic southern uh, Kherson region, one of the four areas in Ukraine that Russia is in the process of annexing. AP News reported the mood fr uh, for Ukraine has shifted and many Russian military officials basically had to admit that Ukraine has won some of those battles. Russia has moved to annex Ukrainian region as well as Putin's efforts to mobilize more troops have been done so hastily that the government officials have struggled to explain and implement them. On Monday, the issues were basic. Exactly what areas of Ukraine is Russia trying to incorporate? In many ways, Russia seems to want to annex Ukraine, calling it uh, an attack on Russian soil to stir up a more hardline military-minded Russia. Uh, however, many young men who have grown up in post-Soviet unions have been reluctant to join the fight, if at all anything to do with the government. Recent bombing has uh, had nuclear watchdogs on high alerts at power plants within the annex zone fighting near um, the, uh, their nuclear power plant. Um, in the northeastern region of Ukraine as well has alarmed many UN's atomic energy watchdogs. Um, an incident there could uh, release 10 times the amount of potentially lethal radioactivity that the, than the world's uh, nuclear accident that Chernobyl did 36 years ago. Ukrainian Environmental Protection Minister Ruslan Strilet said Friday. So. That's just kind of what's happening in the world and around that today as well. I also wanted to mention that here in Missoula, some good news is that the Higgins Bridge is going to be finally open and reopened and dedicated to Bear Track, which was a Salish Kootenai uh, subchief. 
along uh, who uh, signed an agreement with the Missoula Valley and the federal government to go to the uh, reservation of the Salish Kootenai up in the Flathead. And so uh, on this, uh, during this, for this dedication, it's basically they're going to do a reenactment of their own, our own Trail of Tears in Missoula, where in 1891, uh, they moved to the mass, uh, uh, they, they moved in mass to the Flathead Reservation with him and 300 of his tribesmen were forced to move. The Bear Track Bridge dedication will be on October 10th, which is on Indigenous Peoples Day, which is this Monday, and it's going to start at 12.30 p.m. It's a Monday and falls on the Indigenous Peoples Day. MCAT will be making a nice video featuring the briz, bridge and a uh, reenactment of the Clark Fork Crossing for Missoula's version of their Trail of Tears. So up next, uh, we have pre-critic, but here is a message from MCAT. Long live player one, brother. Luigi number one! Mario! Yes! Yes! Hey guys, welcome back. Let's kick things off with some pre-critic. We're talking about a movie that's coming out that kind of is like um, historic, but somewhat accurate. This movie is called Amsterdam. Amsterdam, it's a 1930s type movie about Christian Bale and Margot Robbie's characters that put on a show, vaudevillian type stuff, magic, musicians, but in be be become engulfed in a murder plot that could shake the fictional based on a true, true, uh, true story that will shake America to its core. Enjoy the people in this movie doing a good job along others that do better jobs at acting. I have no idea what this movie is about, but I guess uh, a real wannabe Coen Brothers film. Enjoy this tiny t Chinatown wannabe and how many times am I going to say wannabe? Sponsored by, yes, Wannabe. Are you sick and tired of your life? Why not try something different or someone different in this fake ad where you can find your own purpose simply by rolling the dice or flipping a coin? You cannot make decisions on your own. So why bother? Choose Wannabe. Um, then we got an actual movie. Uh, you know, you can't hardly tell, but nothing says band humor like a movie about a struggling conductor. Kate Blanchett stars in a fast-paced world of classical music where the older you are, the less you can hear how boring classical music is. Enjoy the many tropes from women, women conductor, scoff, scoff, overcoming the old guard. You can't do that. It's like, look at me, do it. Uh, who frankly was bullied by their own guard to keep the classical music the same. Enjoy this first ever woman on a German orchestra, which apparently is famous. Um, then we got Lila Lila Crocodile. Let's make a title rhyme to make it catchy. You may, you may want to miss this movie about a singing crocodile in the form of a Paddington type movie meant to uh, keep your kid quiet for the next hour and 46 minute runtime. Uh, Bromates, uh, basically a story about newly single cohabitating men with, dealing with adulthood with hilarious results. Uh, it's a comedy. Also, Snoop Dogg is in this movie, so there's that. Um, then we got Signs of Love. Man falls for deaf girl who comes from a rich family um, and uh, tries to use her to get out of his own crappy life. Signs of Love, I get it. Um, then we got Stay the Night. The girl from the Kim's Convenience in this romance drama to keep a one-night stand going longer uh, the guy has problems and she uses it to stay with him just a little bit longer past their one night stand. So those are the movies that are coming out this weekend that you can probably miss. They're probably not even coming out in Missoula since most of things just come out on streaming anyways. So those are your things. Um, up next I have a brand new dub and stuff from the uh, 1962 movie, The Brain That Wouldn't Die. Oh God, these health crazes are getting out of control. You should really do something about this. I just don't know what to do with you. Well, lupus is a serious condition. You wouldn't understand that now, would you, doctor? Taking off your head off your body? That doesn't seem like good science. I am a rich white lady, and I demand that you treat me with some kind of dignity and respect, or otherwise I'm not going to tell my other friends about this uh, life-changing procedure I'm about to endure. And sure, you might think that's that there's some kind of health craze. If celebrity health advice is not the way, then what is? Well, there's proper diet, Ew, nutrition, gross. and uh, plenty of exercise. Mm. 
mm, but not gonna happen. Doing this kind of procedure, my money's talking. I just don't think that the body's gonna match your head, and we're gonna have to uh, figure out something else for you. <laughs> we'll cross that bedroom to get there. I can't just find the perfect body for you. Um, excuse me, what part of money don't you understand? Yeah, I was very impressed that I was able to keep your head alive in that state. Oh, you'll do more than just keep me alive in this state. You're going to give me a nice body. It was gonna be. It's gonna be beautiful. Ah, uh, yes. I can just see it now. Beautiful. Bootylicious. Huh. Please go on. Well, I will if you stop. I'd like to hear more. Interrupting me. About this, uh, honky tonk. A donk a donk. <laughs> It'll be mine. I'll have the perfect booty. And then I'll be on TikTok and OnlyFans. If I don't make less than $2 million a month, I'm oh, that's gonna... That's just so unrealistic. Oh, are you doubting me? Maybe you can. Oh, I can, all right. You have to get your head out of the cloud, kid. It's just not going to work out this way. Oh, sure. Sign up. Put yourself out there. Haven't you ever had a dream about selling your image online for millions and millions of subscriptions and services rendered? No, I just want to be a regular doctor again. And then people put in a paywall, and then they have to pay to see extra stuff. Can't you hear what you're saying? You sound ridiculous. You may not be a butterface. Thank you, I guess. But I don't need a doctor. I've got everything I need in that room over there. See? There's something in there. I don't know what it is, but it's going to be a game changer. I Trust me. I know what I'm talking about. And you better do what I say. <laughs> yes, yes. Keep knocking on that door to prove my point. Things are going to happen. Hey, did you know your car's extended warranty has been... I gave the 1-800 number... Your address. So if my body ain't bootylicious, I'll let them in. And there's nothing you can do about it. For I am more than just a head. Yeah, the lady just told me to come on in and I can't get in. <laughs> Boy, have I got the solution for you. All right, hey, let's jump right into some city council. So city council, um, there's not much going on with that. They're uh, kind of uh, delayed a lot of their committee meetings uh, for Wednesday just because uh, we have Indigenous Peoples Day on Monday and most of the uh, government uh, type businesses, including the library, will be closed on this following Monday. Um, as we enter, a War two seat will be filled by a majority council vote out of the 11 members. The following week is a federal holiday, Columbus Day, like I said, but uh, here in Missoula we call that Indigenous Peoples Day. However, the meeting will cover various topics which include accounts payable, a new uh, security company called Black Knight, which is getting uh, money through the city council to uh, do some extra uh, surveillance around their city hall, uh, East Corridor between Missoula and East Missoula to improve the road, sidewalks, overall infrastructure past uh, the downtown Albertsons. Uh, but first, let's uh, jump right into public comments. Uh, this one gets a little heavy with doctor who uh, works with pediatric hospice. And what I mean by pediatric hospice, these are kids who are dying. Um, um, but the, uh, in terms of, uh, according to uh, Dr. Melody Cuttingham, the Mondeo legislature is going to make it a lot more difficult for families to say goodbye to their child that is in the process of the end of their life at a young age. So here is the doctor. The moments when those families have to say goodbye to their children and their infants are irreplaceable and really help them in their grief journey. Um, I know this because I still hear from families 5, 10, 15 years later after the loss of their child because it's so profound and the people who are able to honor them and be with them are part of their child's memory and history. <clears throat> that these holy and sacred moments are at risk of being taken from families really hurts my heart immensely and that's why I'm speaking tonight with a little quiver in my voice. Um, that my most informed friends um, who are not in medicine aren't aware that this is potentially um, to be taken away from families really frightens me because it's an important issue. And although the LR131 ballot initiative is a state initiative, I bring it up here because it, hopefully not many, 
but there are going to be citizens of Missoula who will be affected and not be able to hold their infant and say goodbye to their infant at end of life if this passes. <clears throat> I respectfully thank you for the moments to speak from my heart and my professional experience um, on this really important issue that I, I truly do think has strong city, city and citizen implications. So thank you. Okay, so I looked up the LR 134 and according to this new uh, rule is that the state that uh, includes the following. State that infants born alive at any stage of development are legal persons. Require medical care and to be provided to the infants born after uh, the induced labor, cesarean section, attempted abortion, or another method. And establish a $50,000 fine or 20 years in prison to the maximum penalty for violating this law. Um, so um, City Council Member Amber Sherrill responds from the end of this meeting on this. So I brought her up to, the, uh, to a, a different clip just to kind of respond to this. So this is what Amber Shera had to say. It, as it was described by um, doctors and parents, um, it is a cruel overreach, and I believe that. Um, I suggest that all of these very engaged um, people here tonight take a look at what that is and reach out to your legislators. It is a brutal thing to consider being a mother of two uh, children, and I was very lucky that I had easy pregnancies and, um, everything worked out okay uh, and that I was in a position in my life that I could I could have a child and I was ready to have a child. So um, I really appreciate I, Mrs. Uh, Dr. Cunningham coming in and I didn't even know what she was commenting about until I looked it up, but I suggest everyone does. Okay. And so just a little bit more information on it as well is that infants born alive, including infants born after an abortion, are legal persons and that health care providers are required to take necessary actions to preserve the life of the born alive infant. To the doctor cutting hands perspective, the baby will keep alive regardless of its state until the child's death, even if doctors said that the baby cannot survive. Another public comment was about Northside Bridge and about how, according to the city, had to close it for safety concerns and will be open once they get an engineering team on it. So the Northside uh, Pedestrian Bridge is just over um, um, past Railroad Street, uh, right next to the tra uh, railroad tracks um, in downtown Missoula. So that's just what they were talking about that. And, uh, and now we're going to jump right in because this is a kind of a big issue that's uh, been s sort of growing. Uh, but for the most part, it hasn't really got as much recognition. And I didn't really know too much about this, but this is something I've been kind of like thinking about in terms of just like the urban deer problem that we've been having over the years. And so now we're getting to the part of uh, bears. So, you know, you think about it at the same time, it's like bears need food and then a lot of their hunt and a lot of their game that are moving into the, the urban areas to get more habituated with uh, the city of Missoula. It's kind of obvious that bears at some point will take uh, to be coming down to the city of Missoula. So Bear Smart Missoula got Missoula to work with the city county to come up with a new policy dealing with urban bears, which seems to be getting uh, more and more um, uh, urban in a way. It's not their fault. We built our city on their land. Here's the solution. Let's move Missoula. No, they, you just can't necessarily do that. So, uh, and so they ask uh, the new uh, management plan, which the city and county can agree on. Last week, I spoke about some of these areas from the Grant Creek and Nettlesig neighborhoods that have high increased numbers and have high or amount of sightings. Essentially, this presentation spoke about bear-proof trash cans and how to get people out of their trash, uh, how to get their trash out at the right times, and if not figure out ways to have bear proofing. So uh, Chris uh, Servine from Bear Smart talks about the upcoming winter and the amount of bears needing food. Missoula has um, bears and we're having more bears all the time. This, um, this situation is aggravated by the fact that we're having more and more people moving into Missoula and many of these people don't know much about living with bears at all or living with wildlife in general. Uh, right now is a big time for fruit trees as all the fruit ripens and bears move into those places. Bird feeders are a serious problem, um, particularly in the summertime when people choose to feed birds seed. Um, seed is not necessary to be fed to bird and birds in the summertime. There's plenty of natural foods, but um, by feeding birds um, uh, seeds in the summertime, people are killing bears. This is a direct source of bear mortality. I want to emphasize um, that this is a serious problem in the Missoula area. There are lots of bears overlapping with lots of people. Um, this is causing property damage, garbage strewn across neighborhoods, 
I'm sure everybody here has seen that. Um, an increased risk of human injury. This is a safety problem. Having these bears coming and looking for garbage around people is a human safety problem. The high cost to Fish, Wildlife, and Parks bear managers. Jamie Jonkel is the lead bear manager here for Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. Fish, Wildlife, and Parks spends about $50,000 a year just in the Missoula area with all these bear conflicts. Okay, so that's just uh, all the information, part of the presentation, just a lot of just, uh, just, just dumping of information, and it kind of consolidated a lot of the main points in a, a edit, a, a, uh, an edited quote from uh, Chris. So Montana generally has a three-strike rule when it comes to bears in general. Even then, some bears are too uh, far habituated, would have to be put down. I can say with certain that having bear interactions in the city limits have never been as bad, but I've been saying that for years since we have the urban deer population, why don't we have urban bear population problems? It does kind of make sense that bears would want to come down here, but that's just me generalizing things as as always. So uh, Joel's bear, um, one, somebody I know uh, sent me a, a shot from their ring camera in their uh, downtown uh, place. Um, here, here's a, just a video of a bear, a black bear, and they're basically their uh, driveway, moving right to their front door. So if you take a look right here, you can see the bear is walking up there, and that actually is right to their porch, where their first entry door of the doorway, and you can kind of see if you could hear it, so I'm gonna reverse it, and I'm gonna show you this picture, so as you can see, the black bear. It's a pretty big bear. I would probably say anywhere between uh, 500, 600 pounds, roughly, for that tip, uh, basic size. You know, it's uh, it's no joke out there. And this is like right in the heart downtown Missoula area. And of course that bear has uh, um, been kind of looked at uh, through uh, uh, the next guy I'm gonna be showing up there is Jamie Junkle, who is with Fish, Wildlife and Parks. And there are many black bears in Missoula County alone. And those bears are more curious while grizzly bears are a whole nother monster. And in terms of monster, they're basically, as soon as they see a person, they decide whether or not they want to eat them. That's basically the only decision they make. Black bears, a little more timid when it comes to people, uh, but as getting more interlapping between humans and bears, it seems like they're becoming more used to having humans around, so they might get a little bit more emboldened. So there's just a lot of issues with that. So the big proposal to create a buffer zone that would require bear-proof garbage cans and prevent bird feeders and also dealing with some of the fruit tree problems. So Jamie Jonkel from Fish, Wildlife and Parks spoke to council about this uh, becoming a potential uh, guidance, ordinance, rezone, and this is what he had to say. This year, our bears are in a kind of an extreme situation because of lack of natural foods. And they're going through uh, what's called hyperphagia. It's where all they do is think about food. And this year, uh, we're seeing extreme hyperphagia. I had a call the other day. A uh, fellow was uh, just doing some woodwork uh, and uh, had a couple sawhorses and uh, it was under an apple tree, and there were apples all around him. And the way he keyed into the bear was he felt something between his legs, and he looked down, and the bear was trying to eat an apple between his legs. And, you know, and he, like, immediately freaked out and tried to move the bear off, uh, you know, banging hammers and boards together. All the bear could think about was the apples. So a lot of the bears that we're seeing this year are just totally in that element of eating and getting the food that's in front of you. You know, if they're on a patch of clover and you're banging pots and pans and screaming at it, most of them are just ignoring you. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that was uh, Jamie Jonkel talking more about that. And it's definitely a lot of uh, extreme behavior. It's not normal, according to Jonkel. And uh, warning about some bears will with cubs could make things even worse and more difficult for people trying to live in these areas. Not just the bears, but most animals are getting, uh, starting to get a little more comfy in Missoula. So as long, uh, as long as preventative measures are in place and the tools are available to the public, it's possible to manage this crisis. But however, if you have problems with your trash cans being turned over and a lot of the things like that, you know, th there's only so much you can do. And most of the people up the Grant Creek area, and they mentioned this in the past, is that they usually don't have, uh, they have garbage coming at, in as early as 3.30 to 4.30 a.m. So having people putting uh, garbage cans overnight is just not good enough because in a lot of ways, if the bears know that there's uh, going to be food available at a certain time, they know. They, they, uh, if, they know they, they, if there's a meal schedule, they, they will learn that meal schedule as long as they get their food. It's kind of crazy just how, you know, 
um, used to, habituated they can become. So, you know, so the, for the most part, you know, if you ever see a bear or anything like that, uh, you know, try to take a picture, uh, report it, call 911, and, you know, 911 is the dispatcher, allows you to go to the right sources, and then you can have Montana Fish, Life, and Bark, which handles relocation, and if necessary, putting down these animals. So, anyways, we have a new Ward 2 City Council member, so welcome Sierra Farmer as one of the ones who will replace uh, Mayor Jordan Hess's former seat and, and finish out his term. Missoula Current reported that the farmer currently serves as the land trust uh, trust lands program manager for the Department of Natural Resources and Conservation. She was born in Missoula, has children, and described herself as a strategic planner. Mike Nugent, city councilor, reflects on folks who get on council and talks a little bit more about the process. I do worry sometimes that that being on council is not something that is. Um, really a realistic thing for most Missoulians. And so when we talk about representation um, and we're we're putting, we're having, you know, full days of committees on Wednesday and we're having long nights on Monday and then you're meeting with constituents and all that, that's more than 15 hours a week and, and pay is a real thing. And um, I'm not saying that because I personally want to get paid more, but I think that this is something that this council might need to consider at some point because I don't think that it's fair to expect people to if they want to be on council to either be personally financially flexible to have a spouse who can support them or to be willing to be poor um and if you look at the the profile of the people who've been on council over the last two decades i mean they, they fit one of those three things and um i just think that it's an interesting conversation that that maybe we need to have and uh, yep so basically in a way mike nugent was calling out uh members of city council who have too much time on their hands. In many ways, local governments are usually for retired folks and housewives with too much time on their hands. And frankly, there's not enough, uh, much of a career associated with local government. In some cases, mayors tend to have another hustle on the side in Montana. State legislatures in Montana only meet once every two years. So our government is very small and sometimes uh, small-minded. Um, no committee meeting for this week since uh, um, Indigenous Peoples Day and they'll lump everything up for next Wednesday. So just a little bit of a tease, Climate uh, Conservation Parks, they're going to talk about the Inflation Reduction Act and how it's impacted um, uh, climate initiatives in um, inflation reduction as, uh, as it was called, included a series of Green New Deals that failed to pass in U.S. Congress while doing Build Back Better and decided to table it potentially forever. But then we got that whole Inflation Reduction Act, which lumped up a lot of these uh, Green New Deals um, moving forward. And so Missoula will be talking about how we're impacted next uh, Climate Conservation and Parks Committee meeting on Wednesday. Public Safety and Health, they spoke about same-sex marriage and how folks can get spousal benefits from work and being able to present proof of marriage without going through the county clerk for a certificate. Um, uh, housing Redevelopment and Community Program spoke about their winter shelter. So winter shelter will be uh, starting up again sometime soon. And so um, usually they do like an open house on October 29th before they fully open up the Johnson Street. Um, and things are getting cold out there. As you can, uh, if you went outside this morning here in Missoula, things are a little bit nippy out there. So, uh, and yeah, it's just very interesting about moving forward with this. And, uh, you know, winter shelter has been, been a big uh, uh, part of keeping people safe and indoors during these colder winter months. City and county will jointly fund this project as part of the Operation Shelter. And just so you know, a lot of this money is through ARPA funding and the entirety of the fund will be 350,000 to total a 700,000 funding commitment through the city and county. And this is carried over from the ARPA federal funding. And at least a couple years before the city uh, foot the bill for about $50,000 just to keep the Johnson Street uh, open. But now they're able to staff it with uh, social workers and security guards to make sure that everyone is safe and uh, has a, a, a clean, uh, dry, a warm place to stay over the winter's time. So this also encompasses the security system to put in place just about a year ago. Now with Rogers International covered Johnson Street, Pavarella, and those TSOS sites, designated campsites. And so far they plan to uh, look at four bids for security companies this upcoming season. So that's one of the big things they're gonna be looking into, determining which uh, security uh, company they may or may not want to pursue moving forward with um, for this season. So that about does it. We have a fun video for you guys featuring the Safe Kids Fair that I shot a couple Sundays ago. And this is just to uh, encourage uh, safety, being bear aware, um, using some of the uh, public transportation, beach liner, and also fire department and other uh, organizations that have come down for the Safe Kids Fair. And I made it a nice little package for you guys, so enjoy. <laughs>
Uh, so this is our annual Safe Kids Fair, and it's with uh, Safe Kids Missoula, and we have about 40 different partners that are providing health and safety activities, and uh, kind of educating parents on different health topics and safety topics. We've got everything from the big rigs to um, just everything, flashy lights, home safety, water safety, we've got life jacket fitting station, healthy snacks, basically just trying to bring the community together to educate parents and get the kids kind of active and, and enjoy this beautiful sunshine out here today. Hi, I'm Shanti with Mountain Line and we are talking about bus safety. This is one of our newest electric buses. So let's go on board and we'll learn how to be safe on the bus. So when you get on the bus, it's really important to either take a seat or to hold on tight before the bus starts going. These seats are for people who either need it for a mobility device or for their strollers. So if you're sitting here and someone needs it, please give up your seat. You just pull and set it up and the driver will take care of the rest. You enter through the front doors and when it's your time to get off, you exit through the back. So if you are waiting for the bus in the dark, it's really helpful if you use a flashlight either like this one or on your mobile phone to signal the bus driver so they can see you as they're driving down the road. It helps you be safe and make sure you catch your bus. Um, yeah, so we're with the Forest Service. Um, we also have state over here as well. Um, and kind of just, uh, it goes for every booth, uh, but just providing any information for them is, you know, we want our fires to be safe and for our environment to be managed around here in our forest and just telling them that, uh, you know, preventing wildfires is what what we kind of do out here so I, I'm sure Andy could probably give you a little more but and we want to just make sure that kids and parents know some of the more prevalent um, risks and tendencies that kids have um, especially around the 4th of July when there's fireworks readily available um, what parents and can discuss with their kids about if they find matches and lighters um, around the house what kids should do with those because a lot of times kids say just see these items and they're not sure what to do with them. So we, we go around and we teach the kids that we should always give matches and lighters or fireworks to an adult that they trust. We really want uh, both parents and children to have a great time, but there's also this health and safety message. Preventable injury is the number one killer of children in the United right, States and in Montana, and we really want our parents to be better educated and better supported, know where to reach out if they need information, where to get help if they need help, and then also just kind of knowing more about their community and who's in their community and what resources are available to them. Hey, how's it going? I'm Thomas at the Missoula Rural Fire District. Today we have the Safe Kids Fair and today we're just showing kids our uh, ladder truck that we have at Missoula Rural Fire District. Uh, we're talking about fire, life safety, smoke detectors, calling 911. Um, we're showing them everything that we carry on this ladder truck. We got fans, uh, we got um, all sorts of cool stuff to give out to the kids. We got packets, we got fire helmets, and it seems like a wonderful day to host such a great event. So today, the Safe Kids Fair, Montana Health Patrol Trooper Band No. Just walking kids through just general public safety tips. Obviously you have seat belts, uh, ambulance, crossing sidewalks, and uh, bus safety in general. But just in general, trying to make a good impression on kids as they're young, just to have a good, healthy relationship moving forward. So tell us about beach liner and everything. Oh, beach liners. Those are a whole nother story. Oh. <laughs> I, do, I do drive the beach liners as well, so. And how long have you been doing that for? Um, since December. <laughs> how are you? So yeah, give us a tour. Okay, this is one of our mini buses. Have fun out there. You've got the driver's seat, you've got all the passenger seat, two, they have seat belts. They do have booster seats, I have one back here. You have a booster seat. The emergency exit. <laughs> Uh, the different types of accidents. We know that child passenger safety is one of the most important areas of safety. It's for ourselves, our kiddos, um, that type of thing. So there is then water safety. Of course, in Montana, we have, you know, the kids are out boating or they're swimming and they don't have properly fitted life jackets that are Coast Guard approved. So depending upon which uh, kind of safety or risk area that we're addressing, it's going to have different statistics. 
So we are out here um, teaching the kids how to identify the two bears in Montana. Uh, we have a couple of, a few black bear examples. Um, only one of them is actually black. A lot of people don't realize that black bears aren't actually always black. And then we have a grizzly bear. And we also have some bear spray information for people so they can learn to safely use bear spray. So if you look all the way over there, we also have an example of how to store in the tree. I don't know if you can see it. How to <laughs> store your food while camping. And uh, they went through a lot of trials and tribulations and found that uh, it's best to have a bear spray that sprays for at least seven seconds and goes a distance of at least 30 feet or more in order to protect yourself in various bear charge scenarios. Um, as a result of that uh, research and development, she had a volunteer named Bill Pounds who went on to found Counter Assault, the first aerosol bear spray. Um, in Montana, we do have a lot of sun, but in the winter, we have a lot of reflective sun. So, you know, being sun smart all year long is very, very important. Uh, child passenger safety over with the fire trucks and the walk under bar, I don't think people understand or recognize that kiddos need to be in booster seats, in their safety seats. In the state of Montana, it's six and 60. So six years of age and 60 pounds. And then we at Safe Kids actually recommend eight and 80. So I think that when people actually can physically see the walk under bar and see that that's how tall their kids need to be before they can be out of a, of a seat, that's really important as well. This is, a, this is an iSpy game teaching kids about medicine cabinet safety. So it has a bunch of different things about what should be in the medicine cabinet, what shouldn't, what's unsafe, like having mixed pills in a bottle, that's unsafe, um, having like inaccurate measuring systems, things that shouldn't belong like nail polish, um, and then we have some other things about medicine safety at the station too. And we do each child's fingerprints for each finger. And then they take it home and they fill out the rest and they keep an updated photo. And basically if their child goes missing or gets lost, they can just bring this to the police department so that it's a lot easier to find their child. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some things that are happening this first Friday, kicking things off. But of course, before we start, I wanted to mention the library will be fun showing some of the functional art created during the uh, Home Resource Spawn Con that happened a couple of Saturdays ago. And so their uh, exhibits are up and running. There's a lot of different uh, cool things. And so Spontaneous Construction is basically just, uh, you have, you're pretty crafty. You know, uh, you can do all sorts of functional art created by local builders, artists, and hobbyists from uh, items otherwise designated for the landfill. Um, so basically from now until the 21st, displayed at the Missoula Public Library, the spawn con items will be sold during a live auction and fundraiser for Missoula County Fairgrounds on October 21st for the benefit of Home Resource, their program, and the impact of work building a just, vibrant, and sustainable community. All right, jump right into your first Friday art guide. Um, kicking things off is the uh, Remembrance. This is going to be a feature at the Artist Shop. I believe that this is going to be at the 709 uh, Art and Framing, which is 709 Ronan Street. The exhibit is comprised of a relief and dry print uh, hand-colored by Bev Glukert, um, ceramic and stone uh, cloud pieces by uh, Merlarly's uh, Borchers. Um, and 2D uh, mixed media by Kate Davis. A lot of birds, sky, and clouds. And so that's happening for your first Friday. Uh, exhibit for even cowgirls get the blues. Uh, Shell she, uh, she Dodd, a sculpture, sculptural uh, work primarily investigates feminist and LBGTQ queer issues, as uh, well as human slash animal relationships and the parallels she perceives between the two. Livestock and other domesticated animals are the most represented in her works. Their treatment of livestock is too often mirrored in the treatment of our own fellow human beings. These animals are viewed as unfeeling and uh, inanimate and human minority groups deemed inferior are uh, reduced to something subhuman or something beastly. So 
make those comparisons there. And this is going to be featured at the Clay Studio of Missoula. Even cowgirls get the blues. And then finally, uh, there's a lot of other uh, exhibits happening there as well around downtown, but these are the ones that I was able to get uh, images from the MissoulaEvents.net. You can join the Missoula Art Museum with the First Friday with imag uh, Imaging the Sacred. Join MAM from 5 to 8 p.m. tonight to celebrate the hard work from uh, four dynamic women, artists Bertie Tall, Talia Roberts, Daphne Sweet, and April Whirl. Uh, this uh, group uh, exhibition focuses on the each art... Mm. Okay, this group exhibition focuses on how each artist engages the topic of concert, uh, con uh, conversation and fringe spiritual movements through the exploration of Christian mythicism, uh, planetary properties, and representations of feminine spiritual, uh, spirituality. Uh, each artist rooted in their connection with the earth, their uh, dispro... Oh, geez, First Fridays are usually hard for me because they usually like to throw in a lot of words I've never seen before, and their uh, corporatorial... Uh, to reimagine histories, reconnect the natural world, and reclaim the power of, uh, and positivity of women's bodies. Each incorporates spiritual symbolism and depicts spirituality through different degrees with the different uh, motifs, often related to spirituality through body and through nature. So, ma'am, senior curator uh, Brandon Reiches will uh, speak on the uh, the vision for this project at 6 p.m. So those are all your uh, um, First Friday events that are happening. So let's go dive into some of the uh, other events that are happening here in the city of Missoula. Just double checking everything. All right, bird watching. If you're interested in doing some bird watching starting this morning around 9 a.m., uh, Bird Watching Club October. Greeno Park is doing it this morning and uh, in exactly two weeks from now. Uh, Missoula County is home to 200 bird species from migrating waterfowl, raptors, and warblers in the spring to flock to the Red Cross Bill and uh, breeding owls in the winter. Each season is fun and and exciting to bird in. The Bird Washing Club will visit different sites twice a month during the every season to find what species are present and how they use their habitat. So if you miss one, there's always another. Uh, Missoula Food Bank meal distribution Monday, Tuesday, Thursday from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Wednesdays and Fridays from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Emergency food services through MFB and CC are available for anyone and everyone and getting food is free, simple, and con uh, confidential. Please wear a mask and come in through the front doors of the food bank, 1720 Wyoming Street, during the food distribution hours. Tiny Tales and Storytime is Musobopa Public Library. Storytime is for children aged three and older and their caregivers. Join us Fridays and Saturdays, 10.30 a.m. for stories and fun at the Art Box on Level 2. Storytime is recorded and posted online at a later date. All recordings are done on Fridays, so if you're worried about your kid being on camera for any of this story time, you, uh, you can always bring them to the Saturday live session but MCAT is the one that usually puts it online so people can enjoy it from home if they're uh, wary about coming into the library at that time or just can't do it or they just straight up missed it. Uh, Yarns and Watercolor are also another great event happening at the Pub Missoula Public Library on the fourth floor uh, every Friday at 12 noon. Uh, Lego Club also happens every Friday at 2.30. It goes until about 5. Um, it is a great way for kids just to play with Legos. It's Lego Club. Aerial Dance Series, the West Side Theater. Are you ex uh, experienced aerialists looking to explore your movement quality? This class uses prompts to help students step away from their skilled basic movements into dancing on their apparatus. So uh, the whole idea is that, uh, these are aerial. So uh, this is part of like, there's kind of aerial silks, just a lot of different things and movements and dance and to uh, enhance this kind of stuff. So West Side Theater has always been good about uh, creating the kind of uh, environment so people can actually do um, aerial silks and get, uh, proficient at it. So, 8th Annual Missoula Monster Project. So, Zootown Arts Community Center, one of their more popular series is where they get a bunch of kids together to uh, have monster drawings, and then they have professional artists to adapt them into e either sculptures, uh, molds, or just straight up acrylics. So, there's just a lot of fun things happening like that. The Zach Bar will be open for folks who will be purchased beverages for their enjoyment. This has happened from 5 to 8 p.m. for those. The two, 2022 Mantra Project, the 8th Annual Mantra Project, will remain on display in our main gallery through the month of October. So so feel free to stop by and see the show after the opening if you prefer a more private experience. So pull a card, uh, collective tarot art show. So this is also happening in the first Friday, the tarot card reading. They're also doing a zigzagging all over the place is a prolific seven-year-old multimedia artist and frequent Zach Camper. Uh, Ziggy Stillman will be uh, featured at the uh, uh, Zootown Arts Community Center tonight as well. And then there's also a party under the peace sign. So party under the peace sign, if you don't know what that is, the peace sign in Missoula is a, uh, um, a staple of Jeanette Rankin Peace Center. This happens uh, 
uh, Party Under the Peace Sign, Doran's Party Under the Peace Sign, featuring various art from SpawnCon and music with pennies for a Peace Day Escalation Safety Marshal Training with Western Montana DSA from 6 to 7 p.m., Climate Storytelling with Families for a Livable Climate, Voter Registration for the League of Women Voters, a celebration of LG Solar and Mr. T Construction. So just a lot of different things happening tonight as well. Uh, we also have some music performances and all sorts of things that go bump in the night, including the drag show. ISCSM is presenting a drag show at the ZAC starting at 6 p.m. Um, and they're going to be featuring spooky music and costumes. Join your mountain. Um, yeah. And so also they're going to at Highlander Beer, they're going to have Blue Shadows there. Uh, Free Cycles is hosting MTB uh, Missoula Bike Ball. Join your uh, mountain biking friends and family of MTB fam Missoula's fall fundraiser. $28 admission include a five on block catering, drinks from Big Side Brewing in Western Cider, music performed by the party goers, a lot of uh, great raffles, prizes, and the drawings and winners of Transition Dream built giveaway, bike jousting. Yes, bike mounted joust tournaments are happening tonight at 6 30 p.m. At free cycles. Paula Pondstone is going to be at the Wilma. Stand up comedy, women with a bow tie, sounds like a good time. <laughs> Live music with North Folk Crossing at Cranky's Night Public House. Uh, Tickle My Fancy Five is going to be at Monk's late night tonight. Missoula's massive live body painting art exhibit will also be part of the Tickle Me Fancy Five. Be enchanted by extreme body painting music and other special performances. October 7th and 8th, uh, 12 Brave Souls. Uh, will be transformed into something new and showcased on stage as the finale. All right, Josh Farmer Band is playing at Union Club uh, tonight as well, and that pretty much wraps up all your Friday events. And if you're interested in going out and about on the weekend, uh, it is the last month for um, Saturday markets and such. Um, they're going to do, a, well, the downtown one. They have the winter market, which they do at the, uh, the mall from last I heard. But Montana ma markets and such from 8 a.m. to about 2 p.m., various markets, uh, farm to table directly from the source. Um, a great way for a lot of people to uh, get some uh, freshly grown uh, vegetables, produce, and also uh, get connected to uh, Honey Guy, which I'm always looking for a, a direct Honey Guy to get my honey from. All right. Missoula Fire Department free pancake breakfast at the Missoula Fire Station 5. This is the fire station across from Rose Park. It's off of Mount Avenue. So you can't necessarily miss it, even though it's kind of like snug in the suburbs of Midtown. And so state and they're doing a pancake breakfast starting at 8:30 on Saturday morning. Statewide financial skill building class Homeward is a great resource for a lot of people to uh, improve their finances, build a financial skills with a free class, which you'll learn about eight essential topics of your co um, complex financial world. After the class, you'll be empowered to navigate your financial world today and advocate for your future. And this is available via Zoom. And this is uh, from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Homeward is a nonprofit to help people navigate your complex financial world, quickly adapting to income and expense changes, building soft, uh, solid financial judgment, addressing credit and debt, challenge, debt challenges, gaining financial independence by creating a savings and investment plan, taught by Homeward's financial educator, Katie Sadowski, and other professionals. It's free and open to the public. You can register at homeward.org slash financial dash skills. Um, yeah, there's a lot of uh, good organizations through Homeward, and they are, uh, they have a lot of uh, properties in town that keep a lot of the uh, rent low and they work with the Missoula Housing Authority as well in many different avenues. So they're a great resource for people struggling to find housing and I suggest you take a, a, a hold of that as well. So town bound birding walk to Kelly Island. So this is different. Uh, uh, this is part of the Five Valley Audubon uh, for morning walks from uh, 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. This is Kelly Island Fishing Access. They're going to leisurely search for birds in the woodlands, footplains, and along the river. Anyone interested can join them, and uh, it's a great opportunity to do that as well. And it's at 2106 Clements Road. You can also look at the uh, town birding, birding watch, Kelly Island. Heck, you can even Google bird watching. You might be able to find something here in Missoula as well because there's always something going on. Adopt a highway. Uh, support your uh, um, parentless highways. Um, Jim Gaffigan joke, but... Um, no, Jim Gaffigan. No, that's uh, Zach Galifianakis. My bad. Meet either at Lolo Pass Visitor Center at 9.30 a.m. or have an option to carpool from South Walmart parking lot at 8.45 a.m. Please wear sturdy clothes, long sleeves, and pants, and bring work gloves. Also be prepared for cooler, rainy weather, and this is going to be at Lolo Pass. They're asking people to help clean up. Um, A-R-O-E-R, -E All Under One Roof, Second Saturday Family Passport Program. So if you have a kid um, and um, if you want them to uh, have a fun 
uh, Saturday here at the Public Library. They're doing a Passport Saturday, which basically means it's a kind of like a stamp rally. Kids collect five stamps from all the organizations in the uh, Missoula uh, Public Library. They'll be able to be entered into a prize, uh, something that I came up with, and I thought uh, it would be fun if they did that. And I think that would be a great resource for the downtown partnership, which I floated that idea to do a stamp rally with them. Uh, and I think that would be a good opportunity for a lot of people to be able to uh, see all these uh, wonderful organizations all under one roof in the, the Museum of Public Library. And this happening all Saturday um, on the second Saturday Passport Day, which is weird because this is the first Saturday of October. Hmm. Oh, well. No, wait. No, it's not because this is the second Saturday. October 1st was the first Saturday. Okay, never mind. Forget what I just said. Turner Farms Annual Pumpkin Patch. Um, this is the weekend to go check out the Turner Farms. It's grab your uh, grab your pumpkins, buy your uh, local farm to, uh, table type stuff. They're going to be doing this all week long. This is from 12 to about 5 p.m. most days, most weekends. It is a great opportunity for people to get their pumpkin just for the Halloween season. And if you're interested in having a kid who is anywhere between the ages of 8 and 14 who loves stop animation, Legos, stick bots, uh, drawing. It's a wonderful opportunity for kids to do this. We do stop animation here at MCAT from 1 to 3 p.m. Uh, uh, at the Missoula Public Library. Of course, you've probably seen the ad a million times if you watch my show, uh, so I'm not going to talk about any further. Mark Ferber, Drum uh, Clinic. The Zutan Arts Community Center is delighted to partner with Ed Stalling Studio to present Drum Clinic with renowned music, uh, musician uh, Mark Ferber. This educational event will be hosted by this uh, in the showroom at the ZAC on Saturday 8 um, from 2 p.m. Registration for the Unused Education Opportunity is $10, but no one will be turned away for lack of funds. Drummer Mark Ferber can be heard in nearly 200 recordings. Ongoing projects with crew include ECM uh, re recording artist Ralph uh, Lacey's. Uh, this against that, um, the Mark Copland Trio, the Brad uh, Shepik Organ Trio, and just, just uh, uh, many, many more. And that's happening at the ZAC uh, tomorrow at 2 p.m. DD, uh, DD for uh, teens at the Missoula Public Library. This is also online if you're interested in DD. And you're just a teenager wanting to do some Dungeons and Dragons, Missoula Public Library does a, a weekly thing every Saturday at 3 p.m. We got the annual uh, banquet and auction. The Wilma Theater is uh, joining the Montana Natural History Center for a fun and nature filled evening of the annual bo uh, banquet and auction on October 8th. The Historic Wilma Theater, bid online or in person. Uh, from 5 to uh, 9 p.m. each year. They gather for an evening of food, drinks, and fun to support the uh, Montana Natural History Center. And tickets are around $50 for uh, just to get in on this as well. So it's, a, it's an auction, so they're trying to raise money. Uh, Moon Randa Fall Gathering, so they're looking to uh, harvest, uh, feast, apple picking, uh, apple pressing, live music and dancing under the moon, family friendly. This family, uh, this fall gathering starting at 5 p.m. at the Moon Randolph Homestead, uh, supporting the efforts exploring and celebrating M M Missoula's human e uh, ecological and agri agricultural history. All proceeds benefit the preservation and interpretation of the Moon Randolph Homestead. You can go to moonrandolphhomestead.org for more information. And if you're interested in doing some uh, fun things, they're doing a ghoul bash at the Milltown Garden Patch. Join us for the uh, down-home Halloween party featuring metal bands, aerial arts, slit, stilt walking, and a bonfire and more. Uh, starting at 5 p.m. at the Milltown Garden Patch. Uh, you can find out more information about uh, this through their Facebook page for directions to Milltown State Park. Fubuki. Daiko, Taiko drumming, so for one night only at the Westside Theater. These are like uh, traditional Japanese drums which are played with really thick wooden sticks and they beat the drums hard and this is part athleticism, part meditation and all rhythm. And this is happening for one night only at the uh, Westside Theater and this is uh, going to be a great opportunity for a lot of people to check this out. Ten Cent Mule is going to be bluegrass music at the Imagination Brewing Company at 6 p.m. Live music at uh, Cranky Sam Public House at 7 p.m. You got uh, Divide, the Montana Jazz Project is going to be at the ZAC. So the ZAC is doing a lot of things this weekend, supported by the National Endowment of the Arts and Montana Arts Council. Divide, the Montana Jazz Project brings world-class jazz to cities and towns throughout Montana, and it's happening at 7 p.m. on Saturday night. Uh, Old Post is doing Rebecca Kelly Band. There's going to be some jazz music at 8 p.m. Dueling Pianos with Doug and Josh at Staven Hoop at 8 p.m. So I'll stay karaoke in the, uh, the Bulldog Lounge. Sorry, it's the uh, West Side Lanes karaoke at 9 p.m. I just went blank for there for a second. Clash for Junkers, Union Club Jam Band at 9 p.m. Uh, DJ Chris Moon every Saturday at the Bandler at 10 p.m. And those are all your events, and I am... We're definitely running out of steam right now. Just, man, there's just so much going on this weekend. Just plenty of you guys to check out and more. 
And that's all I have to uh, say for this morning's show and for Wicked Missoula. I'm Scott Ramph.